You may have not noticed this because the marketing teams have been really, really subtle and they've been trying to keep it low key, but there's a Barbie movie opening this weekend and a big Oppenheimer movie, Christopher Nolan. I'll see anything Christopher Nolan makes. And these seem to be sort of on a collision course, these two movies. And I'm told that whichever one you go to see tells me a lot about what kind of personality you are. Well, are they any good, especially this Barbie thing? Because I... I'm very wary. Let's bring in someone who knows. Brett Desovic, he's the uh, host of the Pop Culture Crisis podcast over on the fine Tim Pool family of podcasts on YouTube. Hey, Brett, thanks for joining us. Yes, thanks for having me. I'm noticing kind of a pink hue there with your lighting. Are you trying to send me a signal? Are you on Team Barbie? I, mean, I am not. Uh, look, it's, it's purple and it's green back here. So it, it does look that way, doesn't it? But um, if you're asking me if I'm on Team Barbie, the answer is no, no, um, as expected, right? Like uh, yeah. it's um, it did a fantastic a job. <laughs> Say, yes, because because I'm a dude, and because uh, if you're a dude and you're going to see this movie, you're more than likely if you're not hosting a podcast like I am, where in which your job is to then talk about the news and the media and pop culture, then you're going with your girlfriend. And if this is the case, um, you're going to have to grit your teeth and bear it because it is not a movie for dudes. So I, I've looked at the trailer several times and I, I do love the visuals. I, I got to say, you know, everything about creating the Barbie world looks incredible. They did it right. And it's fun. It really is. But that said, it looks like sort of that whole part of the movie is a one joke thing, right? Just imagine Barbie in real life. But then what happens yeah. when Barbie has to go out into the real world and sort of mix with us? Yeah, uh, for this movie, uh, if I was to give it a, a rating in the most generous sense, which is what I always try to do, is that when the movie leans into the absurd fantasy of the Barbie world, the feminism that is deeply enveloped in the plot goes down for you a lot easier. Again, this is this is a, a guy's perspective. So the feminism, the, the anti-male perspective, and make no mistake, there is an anti-male sentiment to this movie, it goes down a lot easier when you're looking at the absurd nature of Barbie land and all this stuff. It's weird that I'm even trying to intellectualize this. But when the movie <laughs> tries to get serious, when the movie tries to actually portray a meaningful message, Greta Gerwig's writing, the feminism of the writing comes off a lot more mean-spirited and a lot harder to, to take, especially if you're somebody that's aware of the, the way Hollywood is now. If you're aware of just how important messaging is to the industry of Hollywood, you don't take it as the type of fun, free-for-all, oh, it's just entertainment that they're portraying it to be, especially in the marketing, which worked very hard to make sure that none of that feminist messaging was all that visible in the lead up to the film. Well, there's one thing, Brett, to be pro-Barbie, pro-woman, you know, and, and even feminist, but you used a term in there, anti-male. Are you telling, this is basically hostile toward men, this movie? The way that I described it was, it's not even so much that it's, that it's anti-male, it's that the movie takes a very dim view of the idea of men and women together. So the wow. there's a lot of cynicism and there's a lot of down, of looking down the nose at men and giving everything that men do in the film the worst possible connotation. And again, if you're if you're not part of the culture war, if you don't know that this stuff is big and important in Hollywood, you could take this to be just the type of fun, brainless movie. It's as it's as uh, it's as deep as a hundred million dollar blockbuster is allowed to be by a studio. <laughs> And if you're not aware of the culture war, this stuff isn't going to bother you. But if yeah. you do know that this stuff is going on, it's going to be a lot harder to swallow. I've also seen some of my friends on Facebook uh, earlier today. They they took their daughters to see this, eight, nine-year-old girls. They were dressed up in fun little Barbie dresses. And they were shocked that this is not for little girls, is it? No, no. There's more than a few bits of sexual innuendo that probably shouldn't be there. For, for young kids. But like I said, this is where Mattel and Warner Brothers Discovery did their job, right? They marketed this movie in the best possible way that you don't understand that there's a feminist message there. You don't really understand that there's a great deal of anti-male sentiment or that there's, you know, very, very vulgar humor. Now, it's not plentiful. It's not abundant, but maybe it is. And I'm just, because I'm older, I didn't notice it, but there was more than a few jokes that I definitely wouldn't have brought kids to see. Wow. 
Um, so listen, with the kind of marketing that, and it has been astounding, extraordinary. I feel like they've been selling this movie for three months with all of the yeah. stunts and all of the visuals and all of the promotion. It's going to have a huge weekend. It's impossible for it not to. What about after yeah. that? Uh, that's that's the question here. It's kind of going to be a litmus test, right? Like to me, uh, it was playing on four screens, I think, at the theater we were at and it was packed. And, and as I said earlier, you know, this can't be a WNBA situation. Women have to come out and actually support this movie if they want this thing to make money, because Hollywood is finally making a product that's actually for women rather than taking movies that are traditionally male skewed roles and giving them to women in a, you know, a hollow bid for representation. If women want to have more of these movies made, they're going to have to come out to see it. And judging by the theater, you know, that we were at last night, that's going to happen. But if the messaging is too strong and the word of mouth is bad, you could see a steep drop off week to week, but I'm not sure. The in the theater that we were at, outside of the the boyfriends who looked kind of nonplussed and weirded out, the women seemed to really like it, which kind of bummed me out because it didn't feel like the type of movie that was actually something that would bring people together. But we'll have to wait and see. Well, personally, Brett, I think it's weak sauce for Hollywood to sort of flex their feminist woke muscles here and not actually cast a transgender woman as Barbie if they really wanted to bring it. Right. Dylan there Mulvaney is, a, is, is a, Barbie. Right. That would have really brought it. There is a trans Barbie in the movie. Um, oh, not a main uh, character, but there, there, there is a Are trans. Yep. No, uh, there is. Yep. I will say right. this, though. It, it is Ryan Gosling is probably the best part of the movie. And it felt to me that the writers enjoyed writing him as a bad guy more than they liked writing the Barbie characters as, again, I feel ridiculous having to intellectualize this, but it felt like they liked writing the the men as the bad guys more than they liked writing the earnest nature of the women as the good guys. But the real question is, why does it have to be that at all? Like, why does yeah. the movie have to have a sentiment that divides us? It's very there strange goes to Brett. me. There goes Brett flexing his patriarchy. The best thing in Barbie was Ken. Wow. Exactly. All right. Let's, exactly. Listen, let's compare this huge marketing budget that Barbie has had and all of the studio backing and all of the Hollywood hoopla around the little movie that could, Sound of Freedom, which now has officially crossed the $100 million barrier. I know you and your colleagues over at Timcast have been featuring the movie and you had uh, the stars on. The, Jim Caviezel has actually been an unbelievable advocate, not just for the movie, but for the issues that surround it. Oh yeah, Jim, Jim Caviezel is one of my favorite actors of all time, all the way back to Frequency. And seeing him get the raw deal that he got in Hollywood because of his religious beliefs, this feels a bit like a, a redemption arc in a lot of ways. He was, he was a, on my favorite show of all time, which is called Person of Interest, which was a Jonathan Nolan show from like 2011 to 2016. But post 2016, when Hollywood got extremely political, you know, it got very, very difficult. And seeing him be such an advocate for such a worthy cause has been incredible, almost as incredulous as it is to watch the mainstream press, the corporate press, bash this film and seem to be very against the idea of getting out a message about the dangers of child trafficking. Yeah, and 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 it's almost like the response to the movie has has been directly in defiance of Hollywood and the media and the critics' pushback against it. In other words, the more they say, you shouldn't see this movie, the more people wanted to see this movie. It's end effect, big time. Uh, it, 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 when they're telling you something is awful and that you shouldn't, don't look over here for yourself, don't look over here for yourself. Just trust us. We're the tastemakers. We're the ones who decide what goes in society. That doesn't fly with a lot of people these days. And it's why I do believe that Hollywood is losing their grip on what's cool, what's popular. S certainly right now we're watching platforms like YouTube, like TikTok, you know, God forbid TikTok. But all of these platforms where kids and adults are just, they're getting away from the Hollywood propaganda and they're going and trying to find something else, independent content creators. And we need to see more of that. And we need to see people get behind films like Sound of Freedom because- yeah. They're not, it's at the end of the day, it's still a business. And if there isn't a reason for it to get made for the, the people who are looking to make at least somewhat of a profit, they need a reason to go to back. You can't just rely on the cause. The cause is great. The cause matters. But, you know, at the end of the day, Hollywood, these industries are still a business. So we need to come out and actually support the films that we feel have a strong message and is something that aligns with our values. Brett, great stuff. Uh, I love it. Thanks for joining us. That's why the Pop Culture Crisis podcast is so popular. Appreciate it. Thank you. Coming up next, we've got more on O'Connor tonight.